Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words Larry Reed Live, no spaces, 233222. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. Kendall, you, I, I was busy doing something. You didn't even tell, tell me that we were live. Lord have mercy. All right. Welcome to Larry Reed Live. I'm the host, Larry Reed. And on tonight, we have a very special, special, special guest that is with us. And you're going to find out exactly who this man that is sitting beside me is. This is what I need for you guys to do so that everybody can see that we are on hit like and hit share. And I need for you to go ahead and copy that link up under this YouTube video and the Facebook stream live. And I need for you to share everywhere to let everybody know that we're on. Because if you don't do that, all of those that follow the Larry Live platform will not know that we are on. Because Will you get out of the way? Why did you, what did you do? This small hat niggas over here at the place, well, at my house, in the studio, when door. Why did y'all see that? What? Stay in there. Do not come in here. There's nowhere for you to sit in here. You stay back over there. Or sit over there in the car. Car, can you bad this him for me, please? Because I know that's what your anointing is. Yes. I need mean, you to stay out the darn way. Do not come in here no more. Get this black folk. <sighs> I'm so sorry, James. I didn't. None of that had nothing to do with James. This is all Larry. read. All right, I need for everybody... <laughs> To hit like and hit share and let them know that we are on. Tonight we have a distinguished guest on tonight. And it's going to be an exclusive. Have you ever said, I've had an interview with people? I'm pretty sure you have. Yeah, for sure. But I ain't seen it. I look for everywhere for one. Really? I can find one. I do them all the time. You do? Yes. I'll make sure your mic is loud. You have <clears throat> singers. I've been one. singing all day on Sunday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right. All right, we're going to find a lot about James Hall. I want to know where, how he got started. I want to know his creative process. I want to know how he writes. It's going to be a great interview. Those of you that are in the chat, make sure you tell all of your gospel music lovers that the Duke James Hall, some call the Professor James Hall, is here on the LRL platform on tonight. Let everybody know that we are on. Okay, we are about to get started. First of all, well, first of all, I do that. Thank all of the patrons for becoming a part of Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Larry Live. Become a part of the patron. I just had a huge event. It was only for patrons. You become a patron, you get exclusive benefits. And all of you that are hitting like, hitting share, I see some of you donating even right now while I'm on live. Thank you so much, LRLs. Okay, Professor the Duke James Hall. Now, I want to let you know that I'm a 100% complete fan. You cannot be in gospel music. Oh, no. You, can, you cannot be in gospel music and not know who you are and respect your genius and what you have done to choir music, period. I'm supposed to comment on that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to. I want to stay humble. I, I, I mean, but you don't know that you just. Wait, I should. I can't hold for a minute. I'll oh. slip something. 
You don't know that you're really good? I'm not like really good. Thank you, Larry B. Thank you. James, you gotta give me more than that. Thank you. You, you are you really want? good. I appreciate you saying that. Let me ask you this, you know, because I had the same problem with who were that with the um that I had the interview with that just could not take me all the accolades. Willie Moore Jr. You know who Willie Moore is? Of course. Okay. I kept telling, giving all these accolades. He was like, you know, to God be the glory. <laughs> well, that's a, when you grow up in church, these are the things you are told to say when somebody gives you a compliment. <laughs> so we got that, those poems inside of us. They just come out automatically. Okay, all right. Well, you, you're And then I don't want to steal God's glory. You can't. Who can't? You're not never uh, understand that. Put that fear in us. See, that's what I said. It. We messed up. Yeah, you, 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 can't, you can't steal his glory. We're talking about God versus the whole human limited man. Mm -hmm. James, you are the... Sh <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're really good. Thank you. I, okay, you don't never hear nobody else choir music and be like, they should have done this and move this like this and this would have been better if they done mm -hmm. that. Yes. You have a genius mind. Well, well it is... Just like you're saying that, if I sing someone else's music, mm -hmm. it would never be like they did it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because I automatically would hear something. Like when I hear some, like you said, I hear somebody, I said, oh, this song is so hot. I said, they should have did that. <laughs> you know, I, so I know what you're saying with that. That is definitely true. You're a creative genius. When I mentioned about you coming on the show to um, Diedrich, when I mentioned, I think I mentioned it to Ty, I just done all these interviews back to back. Mm -hmm. And every last one of them was talking about, ah, oh, James. Ah, oh, James Hall. And I yeah, I hope you can feel it for real that you're really, really good. I appreciate that. Man, you're good. I'm I appreciate it. And there ain't nobody in and the I church. And I love what I do. We can tell. I and there ain't nobody that's in the church who does not have your CDs. We have not we've sang your song. We, you are the go-to. We mark the uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> And uh whoop, how you doing? Okay, are you what is your voice part? Um, yeah, I think I could do almost everything. I can't do first soprano, first, first no more. I used to be able to do first soprano. I think I, on a good day, mm -hmm. I can. But um, and I, I could sing really low too, you know. So so you kinda... so so what, I mean, cause you can you can sing just about any note. Mm -hmm. But what if you're your comfortable voice? Where do your voice rest at? I don't, know? I don't know. I don't have a rest voice. <laughs> I don't think I have a rest voice. Wow. Because sometimes, you know, I think I feel comfortable here, and then I'll start singing. I'm like, well, let's see. Wow. Yeah, I don't feel good down here. I mean, you know, yeah. not, you know, so it's weird. Wow. Now, that is very interesting. Because somebody told me that Donna McClurkin is, uh, he says he's a baritone, but he can sing yeah. stretch. Ooh. You That's think? a big stretch from baritone. Yeah. But I, I, I'm I, thinking he's talking to his chest voice, but everybody has a chest voice. Right. Um, I could probably, I could sing alto in my chest voice. Oh, like, yeah. Okay. In your, that's so what I, I, I was yeah. thinking in alto. your chest voice, you were yeah. really an alto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't see many alto men, and we don't see mm -hmm. men in the church say, I am an alto. Right. What, how how have, have you had been in a struggle with finding placement? For your gift and your gen and your genius and your talent in the church, or was it or was it easy? It to, was easy to be because I started so I started so young. Okay. So I started off. I was Master James Hall. Really. And um, <laughs> you know, I was singing solos, and um, my my first church was the New Hope Baptist Church in Brooklyn under Reverend Wilson. Then that migrated to the King Emanuel Baptist Church, and my mother started me in classical training. That's my start. Okay, now this makes all the sense. So see, I didn't know that, but I heard it. I thought it was, it, I didn't know you had training in classical. Classical music from the age of five. My mother started me doing that, and I was playing Bach, Beethoven, I was playing all that stuff. Wow. Um, and my mom passed when I was 12. So when she passed, I continued on till about 14 and then my siblings wasn't pushing me they wasn't like making me do it you know my mother made me do mm -hmm. it so they wasn't pushing me to do it and i just stopped doing the classical training well and that was at age five yeah so when did you get that was classical now mm -hmm. when did you get into gospel gospel music so while i was doing the classical training we were in church 
it was several times that musicians quit on us. And um, my mother was like, go on, go on, get a piano. Like, well, I, I'm not doing that. You know, like she, was, she would push me out there. But at home, if someone was, she was playing a record, I would go to the piano and find the key. Okay. And she, so she saw I had an ear. And she would make me get up there, but I didn't really know what I was doing. I was playing a piano. I was able to find the key and fake it. But it wasn't until, I think I was about 11, maybe 10 or 11, we went to a big church with the church, the gospel choir. My mother was the president of the gospel choir. Okay. And she said, James is playing for us tonight. And they was like, oh, you know, it was all excited. <laughs> Master Hall was playing. And they didn't have a piano at the church. So I was like, Mom, they don't have a piano here. She said, oh, you never played an organ. I said, I, 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 I never played an organ before. I, I don't even know what to do with the feet or anything. Yeah. And she said, you're going to be fine. Wow. And I got on the organ and I was able, I couldn't play with both hands at that time, but I was playing with my right hand and my left foot. Wow. Which was okay. something to be doing at um, 11. And then I started doing that. And then I had so many mu musicians that came into my church at King Emmanuel that were instrumental in my growth. Mm -hmm. I had Brother Maxwell, Jeffrey Bynes, and then Jonathan Sells. So in between when my mother passed, Jonathan Sells came to the church. Mm -hmm. So coming up, we were kind of like, we had a really big youth choir. And we was we thought we was really singing, mm -hmm. you know. But I knew something was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I said this. I kept saying this don't sound like the record. Mm. But um, our choir directress, and she is still in my life today, Deborah Pritchard Stevenson. She was, she didn't teach the part. You know what she did to us? She gave us. She put the record. We had a green record player. And she would play the song that we're going to learn and say, listen for your parts. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and we would do that. And then we would get up and we would sing. We even won uh, the McDonald Fest. And I, I couldn't believe it. We were doing great things. Mm -hmm. But in, this, in the season that my mom passed, we stayed out, you know, we grieved back in the day. We grieved like three months. We wasn't coming to church. Mm -hmm. When I came back to church, Jonathan Sells was at the church. And he started teaching the choir in harmony. But I didn't know what harmony was. And I came back and they were singing. I was looking like, wow, the choir, they sound different. And I went mm -hmm. to him right after church. I said, sir, what did you do to the choir? And he's like, I taught them to sing harmony. I said, harmony is the word. <laughs> so, you know, from that on, you know, I had started really growing into learning what parts was and all that stuff. So I was, um, when I was interviewed Rick Dillard, he mentioned that it was Maddie that's pretty much brought that into the black church where it was the, the three-part harmony thing. So you mm -hmm. were 11 years old mm -hmm. when you really got into the harmony. Yeah. Now, at what point did James Hall that now hear these parts turn around and start teaching it to people? Hmm. Uh, I would say I started working with the children's choir at Institutional and it's the Kosher Church. Yes. Okay. The Institutional Church of God in Christ. Okay. All right. Your name Kosher. Bishop C. E. Williams was our founder. Okay. And, um, prelate. So we, I would work with Betty Cooper, and sometimes I would give the parts, helping her with the parts. She had the parts on her own, but I would be able to play and give the part from the chords. Okay. So that's how I learned how to give parts from the chords. But I would always be able to hear it, but. You know, I wasn't sing I wasn't confident in singing the parts. I would play the parts for them. Mm. I mean, that's how it started from there, really, to tell the truth. Wow. You know, one of, one of the main reasons why I want you here is because when it comes to, I know for me, now I'm mm -hmm. from the country. Now, this is what I was thinking about in the shower the other day. When I'm watching all you guys on Bobby Jones and, mm -hmm. you know, come on TV in and then the gospel award shows, but where we come from in the sticks of North Carolina, you guys... Y'all won't say because y'all y'all had all, all this makeup and big yeah. old clothes and colors and the women look like uh, Mama that would say they look like hookers. Mm -hmm. They ain't supposed to be, you know. Yeah. And but it was basically just the culture yeah, that we didn't definitely. know nothing about. Mm -hmm. But we were saying y'all James Hall, Hezekiah Walker songs. Mm -hmm. You know, we were singing mm -hmm. everybody's song. Yeah. But we were the same folk. Right. But it was the way that you made the voices come together that was 
I ain't, I had never heard anything like it. And still, it's a signature signature sound mm -hmm. that only your choir can do. Yeah. Many duplicate. Yeah. Like there's a whole song that you we always sung wrong. You was online and you did something. And you, I said, wait a minute, that's the way that song goes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people really don't get into those parts. Like God wants to yes for. A while. That's what it was. No one teach that alto part correct. So how does it go? So. Yes. The alto part is yes. Whoa. So everybody goes <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's not it. Okay. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my, oh my Jesus. And I'm really good with hearing, but I certainly did not get that. Yeah. But if and then now once I once we I taught it to you just now when you listen again you be like oh there it is you you hear the altos are doing very little movement there. Yes, they're doing that. Yeah, it was, yeah. But it's easy to hear. Yeah, because the sopranos are doing that, so they just automatically thought that I never do nothing with it. Everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that that yeah. See, I I, I, well, I think it was that. There may have been another song. Was it God is in control? The one of the oh yeah, songs. God is in control. We have issues there because. <laughs> Because Ricky recorded it, too. <laughs> and when Ricky recorded it, he did something with the soprano part that we didn't do. Okay. So when, whenever I go to do a workshop or concert, they say, we want to do God as our children. I'd be like, you better do my version. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do my version oh, of okay. it. So, because I think in... The Sopranos in um, Ricky's version, they're going, God's got it in control, something like that. God's got it in control. Yeah. My Sopranos go, God's in control. God's in wow. control. And it snaps better, especially with the first, because they're going, <laughs> they're popping it. Yeah. So. You see, and see, this is the reason why I wanted you here, because you are, and another one that I, there's some others that I, I want that are gospel music, gospel church. History, y'all really have made yourselves church history mm -hmm. by doing that. Um, some some time ago, when I first started my show, mm -hmm. and this was in what was 2016, 2016 when I started my show, and I, I began to get online, talk about anything that was anywhere anybody talking about, I would talk talk mm -hmm. about it. And when I done that, there were things that I discussed and that I said that I read live, you know, on. You know, the, now those things are over and those things are, are closed. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be able to say to you live on camera. I've already done it privately, you know, but I want to say live on camera. What I did with my platform, any and everything that hurt and did anything to you, I want to publicly apologize for that because it was never my intention. And I was always locked into having the conversation and was not thinking about the conversation, how it could affect everybody else. Mm -hmm. I was just giving the conversation and making the community have the conversation and making people laugh at the same time. Man. You know, and so um, I want to apologize publicly on the platform for that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I have wrote down a scripture to say after this. <laughs> Let me see. Let me find okay. my scripture. It's, right. a, it's a scripture that, you okay. know, we all know. Okay, gotcha. Let this is Ephesians 4 31 and 32. Okay. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Yeah. So people was like, I wouldn't forgive him. <laughs> people have told me that. Wow. People say, I, I said, well, is that Christ-like? Wow. We, we sing these songs. We go to church every Sunday, and we're so angry and so mm -hmm. mean. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be like that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when it's all over, I want to see Jesus. Wow. So when you came to me, you remember, he came to me, and I looked at him like, he sat next to me. I was like. <laughs> he did. <laughs> He did. I couldn't believe it. And he said, I just want to apologize. And I was like thinking like to go off. <laughs> and then I was like, I, I forgive you. And I said, I said, I said, you really didn't hurt me. This is what I'm telling yeah. you, I'm being yeah. transparent. I said, you didn't really hurt me, you hurt my people. Yeah. You know, my 
my choir, my That's family. True. And, you know, so we had our conversation and I forgave him because we all have done things that we need to get forgiven for. Definitely. And, you know, your choir members came to me because I had a, I know they had a, did. I had an MC that next night. I know they <laughs> did. I know my people worship and praise. <laughs> I had to, I had to do the the MC the next night and it was Rick and James Hall and we all up you know while he's doing it and I think I mentioned about our conversation yeah. so at that moment they knew that I had apologized and they came to me after one was almost in tears she said thank you mm-hmm. so much for doing this because we love you but we ain't like you because of that yeah. you know <laughs> you know yeah and it's so, true yeah it's true because when um we was getting in the circle at the at the gala I let them know. And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, no, we are still upset. And I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And I said the same thing I just said here. Yeah. And he was like, they, but, you can't argue with the word. But you know, I did. But you know, I did not know what I was doing. I wanted to create a conversation, and I was going to do it as myself, as I still do. Mm-hmm. But I did not know. I didn't know what I was doing, and I secondly did not know the strength of what I was doing. It mm-hmm. wasn't until the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, I said, okay, oh, so I'm Larry Reed live. Mm-hmm. So let, let me pay attention. So there's certain stories I don't do, even if somebody else is talking about it, mm-hmm. because I only talk about what is public. Right. It has to be public on right. some level. And I don't even talk about it now because... If I touch it, it turns into yeah. something else. Most definitely. Yeah, and so that's I, how it go. We love that stuff. Yeah. Our culture. Oh God, yeah. We love that stuff, which is is amazing because I have friends of all walks of life. Yeah. And other people are not like this. Wow. They're not. I've, you know, I've told people what I've experienced mm-hmm. outside of our culture. Mm-hmm. They be like, huh? Mm. They don't even understand it. They mm. can't comprehend. They be like, well. Why would people, you know, and I, I said this, our culture. I wonder, I, is, there, is there something, we say our culture is not church culture or black culture? Black. Oh, black. Oh, black. <laughs> black. Not, that is the black. Yeah, I'm talking about black. Yeah, because you, but it's a billion dollar industry. When you look at the yeah, reality most shows definitely. and, yeah. you know, like the Jasmine brand, not saying everybody did that, Jasmine brand, Shade mm-hmm. Room, mm-hmm. these large platforms. Yeah. There's a lot for that. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. We, love, we run to it. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with the the business, it, except when it gets toxic and painful and people get hurt. And I also would like to be a part of the repair, the reparative part. And I guess that's the church boy in me, mm-hmm. you know, that, that wants to do that. Right. Now, so that's that. Now, when it comes to James Hall music, and I want everybody to do this in the comment section. I want you to put in the comment section on YouTube and Facebook. We, we got people on YouTube, we got people on Facebook. What is your most favorite James Hall song? There are about 1,500 of you between YouTube and Facebook. I want to know what is your favorite James Hall <laughs> song? Write it in the comment section. I'm going to be coming back to it in just a few minutes. So you begin to turn around and teach people at that age. Now, yeah. your first choir. Who was your first choir outside of, you know, the church? I went to the James Madison High School in Brooklyn. And the church kids, you know, in high school or any school, the church kids kind of gravitate. Mm-hmm. So I was a part of the orchestra, and we had an orchestra room. Mm-hmm. So... Kind of was popular in high, in high school, so mm-hmm. we, all my friends would meet me in the orchestra room, and we would play around on Sunday and talk about what we sung. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Yo, we sound kind of good." Yeah. And I said, "I'm gonna go to the leaders in the school to see if we could start a gospel choir." Our church was—I mean, our school was primarily white because oh, okay. we were known for our football team, so we had you know more stuff for those people, and then we didn't have a lot for us. So I said, "I went to the school and asked, could we start a gospel choir?" Mm. And then let me start the gospel choir. Wow. And so that was my first choir. And I started teaching songs. I had started writing songs in, in school. And we were singing. And then we started singing at all the school functions. And then we said, you know, let's take an engagement. <laughs> so do you have any members in your choir that started yes. with you back then? Yes. One is in my phone right now. Wow. Marlene. <laughs> Marlene and Robin. <laughs> They're both in my farm right now. Yeah. They are from uh, 
Well, I have more than that, actually. Hadea is still around. Uh, so that's three. And that's from your high school choir? Yeah. They were in the high wow. school choir. So how many years ago there was? I mean, well, how old Worship and Praise is 34 years. Okay, now how old are you? I don't do that. What you <laughs> say? Same thing Ricky said. Somebody I don't do over. that. We don't better. What well, same thing Ricky said? Well, what? Yeah. I, I, I just, I mean, it's, it's no big deal. I mean, now I'll tell you this. Wikipedia is wrong. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. I know people be like, well, I already know I got it I, I didn't know Wikipedia could be wrong, but they are wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. they can be wrong because that's, that's galvanized yeah. information. You know, somebody did not mm -hmm. on the editor side that really, really know. What is that? 40, 49? You 49? Yeah, that's what that says. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what that says. <laughs> wait, wait. You really don't want to say that? <laughs> no, I really don't. Oh, God. We got Ricky to come out with his. He's 56. It, first time he ever told it was here on, on wow. the show. You need to give us an exclusive. Okay, we'll do it on something else. What, what else can we do? <laughs> <laughs> what else can we do exclusive? Your height. Five, six. Okay, that, I would have heard that because that is litter. Are you taller than me? Okay. How okay. tall are you, Nancy? Five, seven. Hold on a minute. Let's, let's get the camera over there. <laughs> Hold on, I'm kidding all the wrong buttons. <laughs> Carlton, you was just on TV. Oh, the, you, I'm so sorry. That's a, how tall are you, Nancy? Five seven. Can you get into my into? Five, the, hold seven, on a minute, hold on a minute. Let me turn the mic on because you you don't like talking to me. What? How tall are you? I'm five seven. Five seven. seven. And Rick and and Ricky said he was six. How, how tall? Six two, right? No, he's six uh, one. I don't know. Yeah, I'm taller than he is. And then wow, he looks tall. Yeah, he's tall. Um, wow. Okay, well, that's the exclusive. He's 5'6". Yeah. I want the age, though. The Lord going to give me them numbers. Um, I want each and every one of you that are watching to hit <laughs> like and hit share and let everybody know that we're on. We are Ben Shadow Band. You was right, Nancy. Everybody hit like and hit share so that everybody can know that we are on and we are on with the Duke. <laughs> the Duke. James Hall. Many people call him Professor James Hall. Okay, so you went from the high school choir and then you okay. started. Yeah, so with the high school choir, we took an engagement mm -hmm. and then we was like, yeah, wow, this was, it went very well. Mm -hmm. And so when we were graduating, I feel like Marlene is sitting right here. She's in my phone. <laughs> she, me, her, and a young man, Jeffrey Young, who's my best friend in high school, who was the assistant director of the choir. And we, I said, yeah, we should keep this going. Because I was graduating. And he was like, yeah, what are we going to do? I said, you know, let's come up with a name. And we stood there and worship and praise came up. Wow. And so that's how we started the choir right from the gospel choir in high school. Wow. And how many years ago was that? 30, 34. 34 years. Mm -hmm. Worship and praise. Now, you know when um, Cardi B came out with WAP. Yeah. Everybody started. You know, we were in James Hall and WAP. But then she it was a up, good time. Yeah. You know why? Because... <laughs> When you went to Apple Music and put in WAP, Whoa. Cardi B was there, and I was right under it. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Even though I should have been on top, but I mean, right. her thing was, of course, it was selling. Right. So it, yeah. I got some good sales through yeah, that. Yeah, I'm just sure. Because, just because. Yeah. But you know, it was weird. I was trying to reach Cardi B because I was like, this is amazing that she would use WAP, and then she went and started doing the hairdos that my girls used to wear. Whoa. Yeah, she did. So I was like, that's worship and praise no, here, too. Now, that is really true. It was worship and praise here. And then, like, um, you know, they started making up with these little flyers. So we had a flyer with us in our sky blue robes and um, sky blue and dark blue robes. And they put Cardi B right in there with her hairdo. And it was just like she was in a choir. Uh. So I was like, it got to be something connected to it. But but you do know a lot of people in the industry working on the on those the musicians the mm -hmm. producers they come straight up out of the church most definitely the hairstylists the makeup people they they're, they've most been definitely. inspired most definitely. by people like by people like yourself mm -hmm. now you're sort of known your choir worship and praise aside mm -hmm. from their har harmonizations the great the beautiful songs mm -hmm. you, they're known by the style yeah. Is that where did that come from the style of the dress? Yeah, I mean, cause that's that's unique you know, to y'all. I like I said, I grew up at the institution of Church of God in Christ. Okay, that was a 
a fashion show every Sunday. Hmm. They would put it down. I mean, put it down. So much so that the radio choir members, they would wear their dress-up clothes to church, put on their robes, you know, and after church was over, put back on their dress-up clothes to go back home. Wow. <laughs> also, it was, it was like a, a fashion show. Yeah, it was like, I mean, it was always high fashion. Now, we had church. Now, yeah. it was not a, just a fashion show. We had church. But, I mean, we came to church with high fashion. So, I kind of really, like, patterned myself from the church. And we wanted to be old. We, we, was, we was young. We wanted to be old. And I, me and my, my choir members talk about it all the time. I said, we more young now than we were mm. when we were kids because we wanted to be old. So, it was my girls. So I said, y'all should get y'all some hats. <laughs> and some of my girls was taking their mother's hats and borrowing their, their aunt hat. Nene is like my, my oldest friend, Anita Wells. Y'all know her. She wanted to sing Heaven. Okay. We, would go, <laughs> we would go to Institutional, and we would be at her grandmother's house on Sunday afternoon, Nana's house. And she would go in Nana's closet, and she said, James, I'm going to wear this hat tonight. And we were serious. She would put those hats on and wear them to church. I don't know. I know we probably looked silly, but nobody knew. We, she even one time put on one of her grandmother's dresses. <laughs> so y'all are really like a family. Oh, Worship and Praise is a family. Now, we have new members, but it's amazing because we all mesh together. Mm -hmm. The Generation 1, you know, we have Generation 1 and Generation 2, I guess Generation 3. And we all, when we come together, it's one big family. Okay. Now, what, you lost two choir members. Yeah, we, last we, year. We watched that, we watched oh, that happen. Okay. Out of nowhere. Yeah, so, um, well, let's go back even, even further. Even further. Mm -hmm. Melvin. Yeah, you're going to do that to me. Yeah. Melvin Crispo, who was like, right I hand. And, 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 and also, um, Tanisha. Yeah, Tanisha. How was that loss? Tell us about what was their contribution to the work that you did? First of all, that I was talking to one of my choir members a few months ago. I said, we talked about how we love worship and praise. She's not, the young lady I was talking to, she's not in the choir anymore, but she was like saying, oh, we, anytime we have a reunion, everybody comes back so happy to be coming back. And I was like, yeah, we have had such a great run. I said, but that dark spot is there about Melvin and Tanisha. Now, we've had deaths before them, of course, right. but Melvin and Tanisha was just like, like, it was just too much, mm -hmm. too much. And Melvin, the week that Melvin died, he had a, a, a accident, a car accident that Monday. Mm -hmm. And, okay, let me back up before that. Before he had the accident, we buried um, Joyce Taylor. One of the star singers of the institutional, mm -hmm. and Melvin came up for the funeral. Butch was out of Butch Habert was out of town, and so it was me and Melvin. I said, Melvin, we got to work together for this, you know. So we, you know, put the funeral together, and um, our sister Angie was in the car with him. And she said, James, Melvin talked about you all the way up there. I was like, really? And she was like, saying he loved you. I said, I know, I love Melvin too. And you know, we had our little falling out or whatever, but it love surpasses all that stuff. Right. So we had, thank God we had got that stuff yeah. out the way. Yeah. And we had, you know, we did the funeral and he called me like the next week and was like, um, I think, it was how, I don't know how the time frame now because I don't remember. And he said, um, James, I had an accident. I said, what? You okay? Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah. He said, devil thought he got me, but I got away and we laughed about it. I said, oh, thank God. And he said, I just got a little, um, I think some glass in my foot or whatever. And I was like, hmm. You know, that bothered me a little bit, but I was like, okay. He said, but I'm going to have a procedure on Friday, and da-da-da-da. Mm -hmm. Didn't think nothing about it. Mm. That was the end of it. So Friday afternoon, that Friday afternoon, I started, my phone started ringing. Now, Tanisha, she had been dealing with cancer right, right, right. off and on, but she was beating that thing like <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So when I saw the phone ringing, that's when we had, I had to call ID. I was looking, I was like... That's called me from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. yeah, I am. And I saw another name coming from North Carolina. I said, mm -mm, I'm not answering this phone. <laughs> you know? And then finally, um, I saw um, Bishop Bond call. And I said, okay. I said, I know it's Tanisha. Mm. I said, I don't know why I said that. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even thought about Melvin. I forgot that Melvin was having the procedure that mm -hmm. day. And 
And he, I picked up the phone, and he said, "I, anybody, I mean, this is not, this is supposed to be a sad moment, mm-hmm. but anybody that know Kevin Bond, <laughs> that is not an act. That is him. <laughs> I pick up that phone, Larry Reed, and he yelled, Melvin is gone. And I was like, huh? What are you, what are you talking about? I didn't even, I was like, what are you talking about? He said, Jay's Melvin is gone. I said, and I hung up the phone. Mm. And I said, how? Like, what? Yeah. what are you talking? How could Melvin be gone? And then I just lost it. I was in the house by myself. He actually was out alone by myself, mm. and I lost it. But I was like, kind of like, really just freaking out because I said I couldn't comprehend mm. it happening. What happened? And it was like I went. I don't, it felt like it was five minutes later. My boy Luck had rung my bell and was like, and I was like, you know, I, I was like, what is going on? And then we found out, you know, it was a, something happened in the procedure. But that I I've lost siblings. I've lost. Many people that were there to me, but I never, ever grieved like I grieved for Melvin. You think it was because of the shot was understood? I think it was the music connection. Oh, it's like a death. A music yeah. Death. It was, he was a my music. Uh, yeah. He was my music partner yeah. for so many years. When Melvin started playing for Worship and Praise, he came in as a drummer because mm. we were friends. And I said, Melvin, you should come to my rehearsal. And he said, I'm going to come. Because he wasn't, he wasn't in the actual beginning of worship and praise. Mm. He came like going into the second year. And he said, I'm going to come by rehearsal. He came to rehearsal. And he got on the drums. I was playing. And he played the drums. Mm-hmm. And I said to my mom, I said, Melvin, you don't write no songs? I said, we got Uncle Butch. Butch has, you know, that spirit of him is on us. I said, you not writing? He was like, no, I never wrote a song, wrote a song, written a song before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. And like, I think, Two weeks later, he came and said, I wrote a song. Hmm. And it's a song called You're Worthy. I put that on my WAP New Era. It was a tribute to him because that was the first song that I knew he wrote. Mm -hmm. And he gave it to Worship and Praise. So we go back, we go back to us being kids at institution number one. Mm -hmm. But that death really, I had, I mean, I'm telling you, Larry Reed, man, I could not be controlled. Mm -hmm. I cried every day. Every day, every day, I would just bust out into tears. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, some of y'all, um, we didn't have, um, I don't know what that was. I think it was Twitter. The funeral was on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And they was talking about me so bad because I was falling out. Mm-hmm. I, I get all, I, it, I held up the processional. <laughs> I held up the processional because when we got there, first of all, I stopped talking the day of the funeral. Whoa. I had couldn't even speak. That's what my mentor did. When his mom died Tuesday, he mm-hmm. quit eating. Yeah. He didn't eat for some days. I believe it. I didn't talk to anybody. And that Sunday, it was a Sunday service on a Sunday, so we went to church that morning. I, I, was, I cried all through service. And then um, that night, we got in the car, we drove to the church. I wasn't saying nothing all the way there. We pulled up in front of Pleasant Grove. And... Um, Thinking back, a lot of stuff is funny to me. Um, uh, Bishop Barnes' brother Edison came and knocked on the window to see how I was doing. And I cracked that window like this. <laughs> and I looked at him and he said, Okay, no problem. And I will back up the window. Yeah. And I heard him out there say to them, Y'all got your hands full today. <laughs> and when I, they said, Okay, the family's here. Let's go. I opened that door, Larry, and I heard the organ playing inside. Mm. It was like, just hearing the organ was enough. Yeah. And oh, that was his, his instrument. Yeah. That's and, what we know him. Ooh, it was, it was horrible. Now, his contribution musically was, was to which songs? That, uh, which songs? Oh, man, he got, the, he got like the hits. He got um, uh, Caught Up in the Rapture. Caught Up. God, that's Melvin. Gain Gain the world. Really? Mm-hmm. That's Melvin. Wow. I'm not the same. I mean, Melvin got ton. We we were like half and half. I mean, he, he half the songs were Melvin, the other half was mine. Yeah. Melvin was. I never shall forget. Whoa. You know, and it's it was just like a part of my life was gone. 
And it took, like I said, it took me forever to get down an aisle. I could not even walk. Cause, and that was a long aisle. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was a long aisle. So I, by the time I got to like the fourth pew to the casket, I said, I can't do it. I didn't want, I didn't want to go. But you know, Bishop Bond, he was like, bring him. He got to do it. Yeah. He got to do it. And when I got up there, I showed him something. Yeah, yeah, I showed them something. I said, y'all shouldn't have made me come up here. Because I went through so many emotions. I was crying. Then I had a tantrum. Like, what is happening out here? You know, like, how did this happen? Like, I, you know, you go, to, yeah. you go through all different type of things. Because wow. it was like, Man, like grief. I was crying. You went through all of the yeah. stages of the group. Because right. that, that is, um, that you, you were struggling with a septum. Yeah. It was like, I cried and cried. Then I was like, wait a minute. Like, who did this? Right. You know, like, it was just, like, unbelievable that he was dead. Yeah. I couldn't take it. And yeah. I, and you know what? I kept that all through, we had two nights. So the first night was a musical. I gave them nothing. I sat in that chair for the musical. I didn't stand for nobody except Corey Henry. That's, that's that man where that. Because he did out. something that Melvin always do mm-hmm. in the organ. And it just was like, everybody was like, oh. It was like perfect, mm-hmm. but I didn't stand. I couldn't. I came and then I had to direct the choir. I was just a robot. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the actual home going service, Lorraine Stancil, <clears throat> she sung a cappella, and this is where we, we the whole spiritual thing comes in, because you know you, you're uh, we're flesh, so you know we dealing we we dealing with our flesh and all that right. stuff. But she sung a cappella to the power. Because we danced, they danced, I didn't dance, right. on, at the first night. Right. But that worship was what brought me to another place that I was in. Because I was mad at God. I was mad. I Absolutely. was mad. I was mad. Absolutely. I was mad. And I wasn't doing, I refused to do anything. But she sung so, so I got up. And once I started worshiping, that's when my healing came. came. Uh, Lorraine Stancil is otherworldly. When she came to, I had a, the Reformation experience, mm-hmm. and I had Kirk Carr and the Kirk Carr singers. We know she started singing <laughs> your bits um, um, mm. for every mountain. I know. She was singing, and it was like she was going through. I, I, my mind go to Africa, you know, <laughs> and, and and how we are when it comes to spirituality and when mm-hmm. it comes to the spirit world. This woman starts singing, and she squats, and it's almost like. She gave birth to the song like she would a baby, yeah, yeah. and it flattened the church. Yeah, yeah. That she she's from another world. So she did it, and once that worship, once I worshipped, I I was able to accept it. Yeah, I was still broke, and I still and I still cried a few days after that, but I was able to accept it and praise because right. I hadn't danced. But when that next wave came through, mm-hmm. yeah, right. it was a it was a wrap. But let me tell you something. I danced because I'm my family is dramatic. We 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 grieve. We want you to know we grieve. I just bust was dancing out there dancing, mm-hmm. and then when the music stopped, I fell right down, start crying again. <laughs> <laughs> I fell right back down crying, man. I was like, Nah, man. <laughs> Look, nah, uh, man. Now, Tanisha. What, what songs was it that Tanisha was saying that were the key songs? Um, Perfect Security yeah. and Leave Them There. Yeah. And we did, we recorded those early, but then we did the uh, Trip Down Memory Lane. Mm-hmm. And she had, from those younger years, she had kind of been through a lot. Yeah. Now, she sung them good on them first, but that yeah. reunion, that uh, throwback, CD we did, she sung that thing for, with power. And then her CD. Oh, yeah. I, uh, when she done the apostolic ministry. Yes. God can do anything. Yeah. I mean, I wore it out. Yeah. Now, I let really me tell you about Tanisha Crispell. Tanisha was from Bible Way, Greater Bible Way, yeah. Huey Rogers. And apostolic. Apostolic. Aha. Uh-huh. So she, I used to watch her on their broadcast. And I said, this girl is singing. But she was just like belting and I mean singing. Mm-hmm. And so when she, when I teach soloists a song, mm-hmm. I sing it to them where I hear them singing. You know what? I was going to ask you, did you do that? Because a lot of, the, 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 especially the women, 
mm-hmm. when they lead the songs like the lady that sings heaven. Mm-hmm. It's like yep. I said they're like the female version of James in their approach and how they Most sing definitely. the song. Most definitely. So Every, glad I, I learned that. Everybody I, that. I write a song for, I'm gonna tell them how to sing it. I said, this is your format. Vocal production. Yeah. And Nene is a perfect example. Nene, when she first sung Heaven, Nene was a big Anita Baker fan. Mm-hmm. So when I wrote Heaven, I thought about Anita, Anita Baker. Mm-hmm. And I told Nene, I want you to go, I want to go somewhere. And listen, it was like, that became her signature. So then after that, all her songs. And when she swinging. Yeah. Man, oh, I love oh, that. Oh, man. So same thing with Tanisha. When I gave her those songs, I told her how I wanted her to sing it. And then it was crazy because that became her voice. Yeah, but see this, look, okay, those of you that want, everybody hit like, hit share. This is Larry Live. I have the Duke of Gospel Music, Professor James Hall. And I know a lot of you that follow the LRL, like what are they talking about? Who are they talking about? You have to be a gospel music lover, but mm-hmm. still stay tuned in because you never know what other things you'll be able to glean out of the conversation. But those of us that are James Hall lovers, we are, we, we, <laughs> you're, you know every song that he's mentioning, you know every song, you know every move of the leader, and this is an exclusive, because I knew, I knew in my spiritual <laughs> that these ladies and the leads on this was approaching it just like you sing. Yeah. Because you sing dramatic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's very dramatic. Yeah. We are, dr- we are dramatic people. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we are dramatic people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, before a lot of times when we were younger, people was like, oh, they, you know when they come, they're going to come with all that stuff. But I said, God invited us. That, yeah. that, and then all that, they talked about us. Yeah. They said, I, I'm not going to say what church, but they were saying, oh, they doing too much. They going to come in here and all da, 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 da. But then you know what? People started copying it. Yeah. And it became a thing. Yeah, that's true. James Hall Worship Praise started it, mm-hmm. and it became a thing. So at first, they were talking about, yeah, they, they wear those hats. They shouldn't be singing in hats and all this stuff. And all, you know, but then now everybody's singing in hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so when Tanisha was, was saying, like you said, and Nene, and mm-hmm. that I could hear all of that, and that was your vocal production. Yeah. Man, that, that is amazing to and me. And it became them. They, I mean, they, Nene takes that everywhere she go. That is her. Yeah. Now, you know, same, you know, that's how it was Tanisha. So it really was impartation. Yeah. Yeah. Every soloist I write for, I tell them how I want them to sing. Yeah, if they take it and then it becomes them. And then it becomes that's, them. That's the impartation. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's a little bit more than just vocal production. You're doing some spiritual work there. Now, when it comes to how you create this. I mean, because this is otherworldly. What is your creative process when you have to write a song? Oh. When I, you mean if somebody asks me to write a song? Yeah, tell me, tell me how this goes. Two different things. When yeah. God gives you a song and then when somebody oh, okay. asks you how to So let's song. start with how when God gives me a song. Okay. Because that's different. I really don't know what to tell you. I'm telling you the truth because when I listen back to stuff after it's done and completed, I'll be going, who was I? I don't even know. <laughs> People ask me all the time, what were you thinking when you wrote Great Is Our God? I said, I was thinking about the greatness of God. But that was, I can't tell you how those chords came into play, mm-hmm. but it just was birthed like, like I, I'm, I mean, I'm, in, I'm inspired by many different things. Okay. Sounds, commercials. Okay. The preach word is one of the main ones. Okay. You know, like I always tell this testimony. Bishop Williams had preached one Sunday, God's got it in control. Hmm. Next week, I wrote God is in control. Now, with God is in control, I had a few of my friends. We would all hang out after church. And they came to my house. I said, I want y'all to hear this song I wrote. Mm-hmm. And I went down. I started playing God is in control. When it was done, he was looking at me like this. I said, this song is so stupid, James. <laughs> said, this song is so stupid. What are we going to just we keep saying, God is in control? Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. They was like, that's dumb. Yeah. And I was like, I was discouraged. <laughs> I was discouraged. I was like, wow. They thought this song was It's dumb. so spooky. I wrote a song called The Victory Chant, and mm-hmm. it starts out, you know, 
was, oh, 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 oh. And it you, were you inspired by James Hall? Of course! <laughs> I mean, of, of, of course, but not, I, I can't say I wasn't because I listened to your music. Yeah, okay. But it starts out, ooh, 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 mm-hmm. uh-huh. and then all oh, it comes from that. Because God is in control. You need to go watch it. says, go. It's just all yeah. this, this yeah. haunted house, yeah. ghostly sound. They, you know? I had been called everything Batman and Gospel. <laughs> you know, we love. I love dark music. I love. Yeah, I like dark dark chords, chords and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, I the, love it. The minor, I love all that. So I came back and I said, "We're gonna do this for our anniversary." And he was like, "Okay, well, we we ain't gonna make it." We <laughs> sung that song that night in Brooklyn. It was like a sounding alarm. It sounds like the spirit world. When, when the, I mean, the, for those of you that paper Bible saved. And really got prayer lives and intercessors. It sounds like the spirit world. Yeah. You, you, you get what I'm saying, Shemago? It sounds like the spirit world. When, when you really go out in, into that space and you get into that place, there's so much wind in the sounds that you hear. Even when you hear the voice of God mm-hmm. and you're in that space, yeah, most it's, definitely. it's very winded mm-hmm. and, it, and it sounds like that. So I, I think... It did sound an alarm. I mean, yeah. you 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 made it, a, you made a sound. It was unbelievable. So it was like the talk of Brooklyn that night. And then you know we just started everywhere we go. They like, you, you gotta sing out. So we were singing it everywhere all around. But it was not really popular. Mm-hmm. It was. It didn't get popular until I did the Bobby Jones gospel show. Yeah. And we sung that. And I now still, I still we, got a big yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I have it too. I think it's on YouTube that version. And what happened after that was we didn't have we didn't had no recording or anything. And then somebody had um, signed our first project, The Woodsides, and our project, was, when it came out, it was on a cassette tape, and it was in a corner store. Wow. And I was like, one of my friends was like, yo, your CD, your, your tape is in <laughs> the, um, the, the candy store. And I was like, what? And I went and bought like, tapes. That's how we started out. When we did the Bobby Jones show, James Ballard, you know James Ballard? I know the name. Yeah, James Ballard, was a, he's a, a pillar in the, in the gospel industry. Right. He reached out to me and they put me on a major label. What was it? Inner Sound. Wow. Okay. Inner Sound Records. Okay. And now, that's and, how we and started. Ricky out. said that you were signed, but his came out first or something like that. No. Well, how not. did it go? Maybe I missed it. Maybe yeah, no, he, it. I know he didn't say that. Okay, maybe I missed it. He didn't say that because <laughs> he didn't say that. We know, I mean, me and Ricky are people. So <laughs> Ricky called me okay. and said they were getting ready for that recording with David Water Purple. He said, James, because I knew they started singing it. Mm-hmm. He had, you know, I heard they were saying, you know, we're getting them killed. God is controlled down here. I said, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, no. <laughs> and then he hit me up. He said, James, I'm being, now, Ricky don't mind, because right. we, we didn't have this story yeah, yeah. several times. He said, I want to record God is control again. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I said, no. I said, mine's are still on the air. Hmm. Why would you want to do that? He said, come on, James, you know, come on, we, you could, we, we could sing it. I said, no, 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 no. So he had the recording, and then I got the calls, and I, Ricky sung it. I said, he probably just did it for the live, because I said, people liked it, and then it came out. Oh. <laughs> and, and, you know, it was just a bad situation between right. me and Ricky for a long time. But Not when, a long time. Right. Not but, a long time. But when but I saw you guys at Bishop... Um, Jordan's studio in his, mm. in his home. So that was, was that the first time you had seen each other? Oh, oh, no, you know how long ago that was? I, mean, I didn't know. That, that, was, that was years ago. Okay, I was just asking. You no. didn't have to come at me on my no, show. No, no, that was I so was just long ago. No, because me and Ricky, that, that's my brother. Me and we like that. So um, when when he did it, we I thought, you know, I, I was done with Ricky. I I was not talking to Ricky. I wish Ricky could come on this show and talk talk about how I was so shady to him. I never forget we did a concert in Chicago. I wonder if Ricky remember this. I'm sure he do. And it was me and Orlando Draper wow. on that night. Wow. And so while Orlando Draper was singing, I went and sat in the balcony to watch them. Mm-hmm. And Ricky <laughs> Ricky came up to speak to me. In front of everybody, you know. <laughs> I said he don't know about that. That James Hall was really something else. I'm not that person. God has delivered me from that. <laughs> but he came up and stood in front of me, 
And I was looking straight, looking at them saying, and he was like, James, oh, I know you're not going to stand up here and not speak to me in front of all these people. And I said, right there. <laughs> and he reached out his hand. I refused to shake his hand. <laughs> Not in the church. Right in the church. Look, can't nobody say you like church folk. And he looked around. He was embarrassed. And he looked around and said, y'all see what James Hall doing to me? And I said, I did like him. <laughs> and he, so we went through that little season. But I thank God. <laughs> thank God he didn't take neither one of us home in yeah, that season. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, at least you'll be honest about it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I was mad way. at Ricky. I and mean, then he had the nerve. <laughs> All right, Ricky, I'm, this is your last one. He had the nerve to come to... New York, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. for Hezekiah Bishop Walker, <laughs> and sing it. And I was even, I was real mad. The other reason I was mad is because the whole house was up. I was looking at everybody like, I thought Brooklyn was going to be with me. <laughs> Brooklyn left me right out there. I was sitting right there. And it's, it's, I remember going to leave that alone. But I was sitting, like, they were singing, I was like this. <laughs> Because I was like, I don't believe you don't come to my city and sing my song. <laughs> yes, he did. He did it. And they sang it. I know they Ooh, did. they sung it. I was so mad at them for singing. I said, they are killing. In my mind, I was going, they are killing this song. <laughs> but I'm not going to give them one inch. <laughs> but that was the old James Hall. God delivered me. He brought me out. So it was Dr. Bobby Jones, who I absolutely yeah. love. Yes. Um, um, he was the one that really broke. That, that yes. song, God is in control. Yes. But you had so many CDs and so many hits, and then you began to record with the church choir. Yeah. Which is entirely, uh, it's some WAP is in there, but they have a different. It's a church choir sound. They have a different sound. And that's, that's what's so amazing about it, because it's, not, it's definitely not worship and praise. It's not. It's the voices of Citadel. And what's that song they've done that's really, that we used to sing? Uh, glory, glory, glory. Yeah. <laughs> glory, hallelujah. Yeah, though, I mean, and the, the, the songs are, were easier. Yeah, they so were. They, they were. were. So pe the, when the church choir project came out, they was like, woo. Now we can <laughs> right. sing these we songs. We can actually sing we these songs. We can sing these songs. So, yeah. yeah. Did, well, that's, wait now, that's Worship and Praise. Oh, worship that's praise. Live at Foxwoods. I shouldn't have listened to you. Yeah. <laughs> and you went with him. Where did God Wants a Yes come from? God Wants a Yes? Yeah. Um, we that was, was in, what? Yeah, that's Worship and Praise. Yeah. That's Worship and Praise. We Are were, you trying to ask him a question on the show like you interviewing him? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what did, you did, did he not come no, from that camera and ask that question? He, want, he said you didn't ask <laughs> it. He wanted to get it in. If you don't punch buttons and sh top... What did you do? What in the world? It's about where it come from. Let me meet your mic. It's about where, where it come from. Wow. Where it came from. That's wow. where. I can't believe that. He's doing part of the interview. He had an order. I don't like that. You're too comfortable. You're too comfortable. Shut up. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Should I answer it? Since yes. Okay. Well, so, I would like to know too. Where okay. did it come from? One of those rehearsals where God moved in rehearsal and we were just worshiping. We were caught up. And Bishop Bond, Kevin Bond was like, come on, God wants a yes. Give us a yes. Give him a yes. That's what he's asking for. The same way he's doing it now with the song. Right, right. He was doing that before the song was written. Wow. And I went home that night and God, it was like, came to me just like that. You know, let's talk about Kevin Bond. He has a huge contribution to the choir. Most definitely. That is the narrator. Yeah. <laughs> he can narrate a song. He is so funny to me. Oh, and he's hilarious. But he don't like and that's not, to talk about how and, funny he is. And that's not a put on. It's not. Uh oh. You can find him anytime, and he's going to be Kevin Bond. I did not know that until I had an encounter with him. I thought, you know, because, you know, when we get on into our thing, we, yeah. we do out what we do. Yeah. But no, mm -hmm. that is how he is 24-7. <laughs> you will find him that person. He's that person. He's all. always going viral. Because yeah. He goes viral like every month. Yeah. I tell my friends, he goes viral every month. The latest one with him dancing around that the, microphone. Yeah. And I know he be that's, he be being himself. He he's not he's it's, he I don't I, in my mind I be like did he think about doing that? I don't think he think about doing it. He just do stuff. He didn't think about it. And he when just did the it. COVID hit and he was giving God praise and shut it down that out. <laughs> I said you better praise him. You, he, yeah. And then another one where he was shouting and he shouted backwards. Yeah. He <laughs> he he. Let me tell you something. 
And sometimes, you know, I feel like we're getting older. I said, he's not going to be doing that. He, he, he's, I think in his older age, he's getting more. He's doing more. I have seen that man, Bishop Kevin Bond. We have went to church of dry bones. Yeah. And I'd be like, Kevin, no. Leave these people alone tonight. <laughs> but he would work. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still amazed. Yeah. Because I've been places with him, and I'd be like, you know, just... Yeah, be regular. Be regular. Mm-hmm. There's no way. I think that is great. Oh. You know, and, and, and I think that is... And he's got it. He got it. You know, you can't take it away from It's entertaining. Him. At the same time, it is effective. Yeah. How come I said it proper? It is effective first. Yeah, yeah. How he narrates, what he does, even all of the... the everything that comes with what yeah. he does. It's effective mm-hmm. because I think it's, it, it comes from a real emotional place. Yeah, definitely. And the emotional body is electric. It makes us feel goosebumps. It mm-hmm. makes us feel, it picks us up. So by him doing that, I think that's a gift. Yeah. And it is a part of what? Definitely. It is a part of And now everybody's doing. hiring him to do narrations on their on they projects. Yeah. He, I went with him. Well, I didn't go with him. We was at the same. We were in uh, Columbus mm-hmm. for recording and... I thought he was just the MC, but the way he started off this recording, I didn't know because I, I didn't know it wasn't in any of the production of that. So I'm sitting there, and he came out talking. I was like, "What is he doing right now?" I said, "Is he narrating?" But the way he set that first song up, Larry, I was lost. I was like, "What?" I was like, "What is he talking about right now?" But then the way he tied it, like at the end yeah, yeah. to the song, I said, "This man still doing this stuff like yeah. this." I, he didn't have no paper. Yeah. He just, I mean. So he's not he's, a part of the writing process. He's, he's literally. Oh, no. uh-huh. he, so, but you said a lot what of what I When I write a song, sometimes he'll be in the rehearsal when I'm teaching it. Right. And he be already in, getting in get it. Uh. And he's like, ooh, you, you got to, you, I got to narrate on that. He'll tell me, I got to narrate on that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and like, you know, like my favorite, I think, is on Foxwoods for um, mm. Great is the Mystery of Godliness. Mm. That narration is that's the banger. I mean, you know, the church, we are... And we at war. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, y'all had an unhandless on the <laughs> You know, we, the church is so talented. Yes. so gifted. Yes. And we are copying. Most and definitely. And then we're marketed. Yep. In spaces and places that we will not go. Most definitely. And because you could have easily, mm-hmm. easily crossed over. Most definitely. Easy, and there's so many different problems on the classical side. You know, mm-hmm. y'all, you guys are really, really unique in what it what it is that you do. Yeah. Now, um, those of you I, I don't know, I, I don't wait it too long. <laughs> you know, somebody wanna know, are you any kin to Prophet Todd Hall? That's my cousin. Oh he is? Yes. That's what it's like. There was the bell, like bam, bam. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's prayer time, eight o'clock. Okay. You know, but, um, yeah. So he's actually. That's my family. cousin. Yeah, that's my family. So that means Aaron Hall. That's right. Is, okay. That's right. Okay. All right. 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 Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna look through here and look at some more. Come and see what were the the favorite song. Go ahead and retype it because it's too far long ago. <laughs> what is your favorite? James Hall and what, or James Hall and the uh, what's the Citadel? What is your favorite song? I want to see it. Type it in here. Okay, hold to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. Okay. The blood. Uh huh. Yeah, that's you know that's another spooky one too. Yeah, that. Ooh, that became the, the communion. Love. That became the communion song at a lot of churches. Yeah. Let me find I seen that. Too, too close. That's one of my favorites. No, that's Melvin Chris and Melvin Chris Bell. He wrote that? Yeah. Wow. Blessed mm-hmm. be the name. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, second CD. Wow. <laughs> okay, Perfect that's Security. Tried. That is Tanisha. Tanisha. Mm-hmm. Okay, what? Well, great is our God. Everybody's saying there's too many in there. Kevin Lemons is in the chat. His squad is awesome. Ooh. I love his, love his squad. That's, he that, was at the Reformation that, Experience. That's a um, count part. on me. That's on Citadel. Yeah, that's Citadel. Right. A lot of people saying all of it, all of it. <laughs> anything Appreciate but that, fail y'all. and hide me. Ah, now anything but fail. Melvin wrote that as well. Wow. And we just we recorded that on my last project. That oh. was Tanisha's song. 
Last project meaning there's a new project coming out. Yeah. We, okay, we, everybody type in here. <laughs> new project. Do it on YouTube and on Facebook. You new project. Yes. About eighteen hundred of y'all between YouTube and Facebook. New mystery of godliness. Game the world. Ooh. Wonderful. I mean, they they name it every. Blessed be the name. Sweet little Jesus boy on the Christmas yeah. project. Okay. There is a new project that is coming out. Is that 2021 or 2022? Yep. This year. 2021. This year, 2021. Is that WAP or? That's James Hall Wash and Praise. Okay, now, what sh what can you tell us? Because I know the Okay, label. so we recorded that at the Lincoln Theater in D.C. Okay. So we've done a lot of firsts. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So, like, we were, <laughs> we were the first required to record in the Alice Tilly Hall at Lincoln Center. Okay. We was the first to record a gospel project at the Rialto Center in out here. Mm -hmm. We were the first to do gospel recording at Foxwoods. Mm -hmm. And now we was the first one to do a gospel project here at the um, Lincoln Theater in DC. Wow. So this project is called The New Era of the Old Time Way. I so, think that's prophetic. Yeah. I think that's what COVID is doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it, it, it is. It's, bring, it's sort of taking us somewhere we've never been before, but it's mm -hmm. very familiar uh, where we that's, really come that's from. Re that's yeah. great what you said, because yeah. that's just what this CD is about. I went and pulled back stuff that churches were doing years when I was a little boy mm -hmm. and nobody these churches stopped doing them hmm. you know like doxology and mm -hmm. uh, processionals and um, hymns mm -hmm. you know I now I, I love hymns mm -hmm. so I, you're gonna always find some kind of hymn in my um, projects but this project when people like older people they're gonna be like what we used to do this in our church, but it's going. It's in the James Hall way. It's not going to be here, but it'll be familiar to your ear. But it's just going to be a little different. That's dope. I mean, yeah. I, I like that kind of music, mm -hmm. um, and I know this. And it's like a, it's going to be like a, a history lesson, yeah. more or less. And you guys, let me know in the chat if this is true or not. But for me, as a as a church boy, you know that listens to secular music, you know, because I'm paper Bible say, but a little bit secular. Mm -hmm. And but <laughs> what what I have noticed is. This Cora done came and jacked up my whole playlist because now I done took a whole lot of my trap music. I still got it, but the trap got his own playlist. Oh, over there with uh, all them young thugger, this, that, and all that. Oh, that's over there. Mm -hmm. But my playlist I've been keeping on rotation is a lot of, that may be a little second that is very positive, yeah, right. but it's all about that. It's more gospel is more spiritual music is more positivity that i'm consistently having on consistent ro rotation gotcha yeah so the chorus has done that and sort of yeah i know it's right so so i i i'm looking forward to this project now ricky doing the project too you think he's gonna try to have it on the same day yours is we had this conversation here? already me and i said <laughs> he said we was to, we just had this conversation maybe like two weeks ago and he said James, when you're probably, I said, I told him when it was supposed to come out. He said, now, nah, I hope we don't. I said, now, nah, Ricky, we're going <laughs> we to have to be talking. As soon as you find out your date, you let me know. And if mm -hmm. when I get my date, I'll let you know so we won't bump heads because that'll be horrible. Yeah, yeah, because everybody need their four weeks. Yeah, we need it. <laughs> so, you know, and I was at the recording. I was at his recording, you know, so I, I know, what, you know, they bringing it as always. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, I'm complete. Is there something that you wanted to say to to the audience or to people? Something that's that's coming. Something that's imagine this. There's something that you want to do besides music or music. Is yeah, I want to be on TV. I want to act. Really? I like to be in a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I want to. I want to be on TV, man. I had before, COVID is something else because right before the COVID, I had got an agent. And I don't know. I don't know if the agent died or what. Because <laughs> after COVID, I never heard back from them. So I don't know. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had. A, I I got a script and some calls before COVID, and COVID got everything going. Ain't that something? 
on, on a lot. Well, I've actually have heard from them, but it's, everything's delayed. So yeah, yeah, it'll be a while. Okay, just wondering. Now, those of you that are just coming in, we had a, a very interesting conversation. If you are gospel music lover, there are things that he shared here that I think will be very great for you. What would you say to someone that is ready to get into the the gospel music industry? Ooh. I know what I say. But. Wow. Don't. No, I didn't say <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to say not to get into the gospel industry. If God gave you something, gave you something to do, do it. Mm-hmm. You don't have to join any industry to do what you're doing. If you're doing something and it's popping, it's going to make noise by itself and they'll gravitate to you. Going searching in the industry, usually some kind of way you're going to get discouraged, mm. burnt, mm. and, you know, it's going to, it's, it's, it's not easy. It is not, especially, th- now it was easier back in our beginning yeah. days, but yeah. now, ooh, very, very saturated, very, very, ve- it's hard. It's very hard. And um, it's this, I, I speak to artists, this is something that I read, artists hit me all the time mm. for, you know, you know, what they should do. And I'd be like, I, I, I don't know. I, Cause I, I've been bruised several times in industry. You know, I'd be like, what? Mm. How? You know, but it's just what it is. There's on that except was, hasn't been as like the forefront of right. some right. for some years. Right. So it, it's, it's, it's discouraging. Yeah. Um, so I know we about to sign off. But what did you think of the interview? How many people told you not to come? Oh my God! Hmm. Let me tell you, I was—I had got myself all together to come, so I was fine. I was fine with coming until today. <laughs> Everybody started me like, you know, man, I, I ain't feeling that. You shouldn't do. It. I was like, what? I mean, one of the person people that hit me that said that, I was like, now you gonna do this? You like? I thought you was like for it. Then they was like, you know, I'm not feeling it. I, you know, I don't think you should do it. And I was like, so I started feeling a little crazy. But, really? you know. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, know but see, that's the power of people to have access and relationships. Yeah, yeah, because I, I respect opinions of my friends right, right, and right, right, right. My, my close family and stuff like that. I respect that. So if they say something to me, I'd be like, they yeah, you know. Spirit. Yeah, get And I started yeah. feeling like crazy. And I actually wasn't even feeling well today. I was like, so when they asked, I had to do a COVID test when I came here. <laughs> so I... I, I was like, I hope I don't have COVID because I started feeling sick. But I think I was feeling sick because everybody was calling me saying, uh, don't do it. Yeah. You know, and um, I pass. I, of course, I'm sitting right, here. So. Of course. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, it, it did feel like, you know, make me feel crazy. But I, I'm, I'm a Christian, man. Yeah. I, I'm in touch with the Lord. And I'm not, if, if God don't want me to do something, he yeah, gives me that know. direct oh, well, I sign. Know you you know, and I'd be like, I would have called you and said, you know what? I'm sorry, I can't yeah. do it. But it wasn't that, and I, you know, I had but a. You know, I had bonus. picked it up too because you're the first um, artist. All I mean, guests, although there there have been others mm-hmm. that I'm like, you sure you come in? Oh, now <laughs> let me tell you about Larry. He hit me last. He hit me t- two days before. He hit me last night. I said, Larry, you think you you, you hitting me again to see if I'm coming? I was like, I'm, I'm going. Um, <laughs> it was great. Then he hit me. Did you get picked up? <laughs> I said, it's my driver there. I'm yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. But I mean, I'm glad I came because we got to break down walls and barriers. That stuff yeah. is... COVID, man. Yeah. COVID should make all of y'all change. Whoa. Now that's a because thing. last year, hmm. 2020, I was waking up every morning to a call. Yeah, six. Eight. Why? I don't know why they were dying at 5 or 5.30 in the morning. It seemed like everybody wanted to die that time. Yeah. And I would get that call. Because so a lot of them died in their sleep. Yeah, yeah, right. So that must have been what? Every morning, back to back, back to back, back to back. And I was just, I was scared. They're still folk cutting the monkey shine right through COVID. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, this Same thing, COVID devil they was before it started. Yeah. COVID didn't change a lot of people. And I would think church would be different. No, that's a whole nother conversation. Nah, yeah, dude, we, nah, yeah. You said, how you, how? Some of the same preachers that ain't had nowhere for COVID 
Then had all that time in the house, mm-hmm. and we come back, you still preaching some of the same messages you preached before. <laughs> what the hell? I said, what in the world? <laughs> they, I would go find me another church or get me a good book at the store and just be done with it. It should be so much to preach about. It's so much to preach about. And, you know, I just feel like, you know, now everybody's watching live stream, you know, so yeah. we're not coming out to church no more. Yeah, but give me something on the live stream or some of them live streams. <laughs> Them well, see, it's a good thing with, the thing with live stream. You could be like, oh, I ain't enjoying this church today. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh-huh. what people are doing. They, they surfing the web, finding who got the best service. Them dry streams. Dry that streams. That's the same. Y'all not yeah. even interested. Not even entertained. But let me tell you, I, put, I just put up a post the other day. I was sitting in my living room. Because I, I love, I'm a church boy. I Larry love church. Too. I love church. Now, I, I, you put on some music, I'm going to dance at a club. I'm definitely going to do that. But... <laughs> I, I love church. I'm a church boy. Mm-hmm. And, like, I still love church. Like, I have yeah. friends that don't go to church. They right. just be like, right. James, you really be in church mm-hmm. all day? I said, I'm in church all day on Sunday. It like, yeah. And I said, it's like 1977 for me in church. Because mm-hmm. God has been so good to me. Yeah, I got you. And I just feel like I owe him. I mean, we, like I put on Facebook the other day, I'm going to always be behind on my praise. Because he's been so good. Yeah. I can never catch mm-hmm. up to the blessings. I got you. Oh, I like that, James. I can never catch up to them. I was sitting in my living room. That's good for a Facebook post, but it's not good for a sermon. And I'm sick. Yeah, and I can't, I said, what is y'all, what is y'all <laughs> preaching? Yeah, and I'm not nobody's preacher. So, oh, so you're not a minister. I thought I'm, you were halfway a preacher. Man, I, I mean, no, no. Just a minister. I preach through, I preach through, there you go. Okay. There you go. I preach through my music. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Now, I could exalt a little bit when he get on me, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I just thought the church. Okay. I thought we was gonna be running into church. Okay, look, somebody's asking: Has Larry asked any hard hitting questions or not? Let me tell you what people mm-hmm. wanted me. Of to course, do. This is to that's our culture. How I do my show by myself, and that's different. I'm commentating on whatever is out there. Mm-hmm. But if I, I'm never gonna invite somebody to my studio and then ask them things that ain't my. I almost said something. I got no business. <laughs> ask, ask them something that ain't none of my business. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that. I'm never going to do that. Right. But I let them share because DJ came over here and told all his business. I mm-hmm. said, no, wait a minute. I said, no, I didn't <laughs> ask you. Didn't have to. He went back and dug up his old stuff from blogs and stuff. And I said, no, I, yeah. I didn't do that. He did that. Right. <laughs> no. But I want to get to know these people that are behind these great songs yeah. that all of us are looking up to and thank you for the donations going. If I was if I was looking him at the food, the donations be coming in fast, fast, fast. <laughs> but um, that these great people who are behind the music that have shaped our spiritual life, our, yeah. our church experience, mm-hmm. and know who these people are right. and get these kind of questions asked. Most know? definitely, most yeah. definitely. And, and and I'm always going to be in this platform. My way open to you. If somebody at some other platform mm-hmm. do something to you. And be lying. Mm-hmm. You come tell me. Okay. I come over here and I tell. I said, "This is what they said." <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's that's what I, I've been in the business of of doing, mm-hmm. and I don't mind doing that. What I'm still talking about, whatever's out there. Yeah, if I feel like it's gonna be beneficial, but the way that I do it mm-hmm. is gonna be totally different. It's gonna do nothing but uh, make the whole community better, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm gonna do. Come tell you what the reality is. Ooh, I don't generate so many millions of dollars. I don't need to do nothing. I don't have to do oh, every live another day. I, let <laughs> me tell you, I can tell you from this house. <laughs> Larry got a house, y'all. I don't know if y'all know. Larry got a house. I'm putting it out there. This is a nice house. <laughs> you know, so I, I mean, the, the reality is I, this, what I want to do with this platform is to create a conversation. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. And, and I appreciate it. And once I realized... The power behind this. I mean, I would get off my platform and get a call from own producer. I know it's right. I know it's right. From Joe Austin office, from Jake's. See that? See that? See that? So, but that I had to when that began to happen. I said, "Okay, now wait a minute. This is getting serious. You know, I'm I'm in the I'm in the headspace now to help." Right. Still want to entertain. I'm a whole fool. I can't yeah. do it but me. Yeah. But I'm just some things. I just think 
I just think I'm being Bob Dorn. But if you don't like that, then you ain't got to come at Larry Live. That, that's all right. There are plenty of thousands of people that still love the show for what it is. That's and right. appreciate the growth and the clarity of, of the show. Yeah. Amen. But this is going to be great. And I got some great interviews coming up. There's some... Um, John Gray and his wife, they're coming. Now, nice. I, I did a huge story on them. Nice. Yeah. And if they can forgive me. Woo. Yeah, because I'm out. And I want my fault. I don't know, the only thing I was doing was talking about what was out there, but then the, the other people came in. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that was just the one my thought. And they understood, you know, you, you just doing what you do. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be involved in the repair. And John has nice. turned over a new leaf. So, and he says it. He said, mm -hmm. God used you to help me get myself together. That's what he said. He said, so he's coming up here. Nice. Yeah, so that's going to be great. I'm working on something now. I want to say so bad. I say off camera. But okay. that interview is going to be a, a shocker, you know, to everybody. I mean, we, we're at the top of, of, the, of the bodies of the grass. Come on. You know? <laughs> Next week, we're going to be having Ja'Kaylin Carr. She's going to be hey. here. Um, she had that radio program. So yeah. She took over. See that? They she was and she was hosting the Stellas this she year. She sure was. Come yeah. through. She's so doing that, that thing. Yeah, she's doing the thing. And then the the week after that, Michelle Williams is going to be here. Ah, be that's my sister. Her, yeah, interviewing that's her as well. All right, James, thank you so much. Thank you, Larry, for having it, me. Man. This was I so excellent. appreciate this. We really to to understand your your path, your journey. I appreciate your gift. Thank you and so the much. Genius that you are as relates to gospel music. Thank God you. bless you. And we'll talk to you guys later. I see you. Turn your notifications on. Text um, Larry Reed Live with no spaces to 33222 because I am going to have to pop up live <clears throat> a few more times. I think this week. I think I am. But then definitely next Monday, Ja'Kalen Card. And the Monday after that is going to be Michelle Williams. She's going to be in this chair right here with us then. You'll get to know about Ja'Kalen. You'll get to know about Michelle Williams. Nobody, did, James didn't even tell me anything was off limits. The only person that made me not be able to say, ask something cursing was Ty Trippett. He was the only one. Mm -hmm. But it, I ain't going to say it was him. It was the person between me yeah. and him. Got they it. wanted to check and see what the question I'm like, I ain't going to ask no, no crazy <laughs> stuff. I mean, that's way back there before I even got into this kind of stuff. I ain't, mm -hmm. I ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's going to be great. It's going to be really good. Become a patron, LarryLive.com slash um, la no, patreon.com slash Larry Reed Live to become a patron. Because over there, I talk very open, very honestly. My experts are over there too. The stock market is doing some things and you know what to do next. All my experts are going to be over there making sure y'all get y'all stuff together. And also, before you sign off, eight is my number. It's a divine number. It means transition. It means new beginning. Everybody do $8.88 right now on the cash app. That's dollar sign, MBN Network, or Venmo, the at symbol, MBN Network. Or you can go to the website, LarryLive.com, and you can click Donate. That's the PayPal there. Or do it through Venmo. Venmo. I was there, Venmo. Okay, I meant <laughs> Zelle. You can do Zelle. The email address for Zelle is info at the MBN Network.org. Or you can text the word GIVE to 404-800-4530. And many of you, I, I seen your LRLers like to mail it in, 780 Morasco Drive. And that is unit number 244224, Atlanta, Georgia, 30324. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, James. Thanks for having me. It was me. great, and it was good. And I will chat with you guys later. Goodbye. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words, Larry Reed Live, no spaces, 233222. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today.